there are uh, 19 medical students on this trip. When they come here, um, they have a different idea of what medicine is, and uh, this is an eye-opening trip for them. I've seen the spark go from a little spark to a glowing ember, now to a flame. I know I'm learning a lot more than I would ever have the opportunity to. So Dr. Flanders, as you know, this trip to Peru was my first trip. And what impressed me about that was how well the trip was organized. What does it take to put something together like this? Well, thank you. Um, first of all, it takes about a year of time during which uh, we start with a needs assessment of an area. We begin fundraising, recruitment of appropriate providers. We look for sponsors. Uh, then we begin looking for safe accommodations, travel translators, venues, food service, security guards. You start a year before. About a year. Mm -hmm. A little bit longer if it's a new location, but in the locations that we go back regularly, it's usually a year. But what about the government? What kind of hoops do you have to jump through with the in-country government? Sure. Um, sometimes, depending on the country, there are a lot of hoops, sometimes not so much. Um, it is always necessary to have a medical license, so we must go through the, in Peru, it's the Peruvian Medical Society, and each provider must be individually credentialed to have a license to practice medicine there. We also need to make sure that our population is properly culturally trained, and that we have uh, proper vaccinations, medications, um, and ability to communicate. There is a lot of health disparities within rural South America and um, today and this week in Peru our purpose is to um, help relieve some of the disparities and also give medical students the opportunity to um, have hands-on learning here today. The most, most of the patients who come are patients who uh, are from poor, poor status. Some of them come from the rivers, for example. They come. Even some come journeying one, two days to get to Iquitos. When I found out that Duke Care was doing this trip, I instantly knew from the first day of medical school that I really wanted to come on this trip. My, my motivation would be to learn, to grow, and to just get more comfortable with the uncomfortable. I love meeting the locals, um, getting to learn about their culture um, and getting to show you know to show them that there are people around the world that care about them. Being here I've been able to just remind myself why I'm doing this and how important it is and I, it's been really powerful for me. My son was a WVSOM medical student and he did this trip in 2018. In 2019 after I finished my doctorate Dr. Flanders who was very influential with my son invited me to come along and I did and I've been hooked since then. I've been going to Peru with the Medical Brigade since 2016, and I've been there 10 or 12 times doing the same. We had to take a break during COVID, but we're right back going strong. We serve the indigenous people there. They are very grateful and continue to go back to that location because um, that's the definition of international global outreach. We try to continue to support and teach people sustainability and to be able to support themselves and do the things that we bring to them. We teach them what we know, they teach us what they know. We work together and it's a continually built bridge, getting stronger and stronger. So here you have to use your brains, your hands, what your clinical skills and to make uh, the proper diagnosis and that pretty much changed everything because now you are in another environment and if you cannot um, use all of these skins then you have nothing and then that's when we teach them how to do this and, and this is very very important for them and they, they, they learn a lot. Even from the beginning WBSOM really emphasizes you know the whole body mind and spirit connection and we're able to utilize that here 
Um, especially working with the OMM doctors. We're paired one-on-one -on -one with a physician, so they kind of let you take the lead. I was doing the diagnostic portion, doing ultrasounds, so I was only doing that diagnostic part of the exam, and I was finding gallbladders and bladders and prostates, and I was talking about the pathologies related to it. And then whenever I was in GI in the afternoon, I was learning about the history taking portion and uh, prescribing medication. Since we're fresh out of the didactics of the first two years, it's like immediately putting it into practice rather than waiting until you know June or July to get into the hospitals. This trip is going to be able to help me take the amount of knowledge that I have so far and be able to actually apply it and use it. And the attend of your wedding is like, yes, you do know what that is. You've learned so much already, and you still have so much to learn, and they're excited for you. They're excited to see where you are, and then also to tell you all the new things, and you just get even more excited. Part of the medical profession is a principle of solidarity, you know? the principle of, of helping others. As a medical doctor, I'm going to give a few days of service, or maybe one month of service. Further ahead, in a third world country, in a, in a medical mission. It's just been very humbling meeting the people, communicating, working with the physicians, and there is a level of like rewarding feeling behind it. It's a little nerve-wracking because it's so new to me, but it's very exciting to see how far I've progressed this year. At the end of each day, I've been exhausted, but also really fulfilled and happy that I got to have so many different experiences in one day. When you're coming to an area like this, where you see that you're providing this care and these people are so grateful for it. So it just makes you feel even more grateful for what we have and what we're able to do for them. The word that really comes to mind is driven. And so having experienced what I did even just in one day and like being able to help the people of Quito's, um, that was really rewarding and it's like, it gives me confirmation that yes, this is what I want to do. Um, I want to be a physician and I want to be able to help people. And I came back home with so much to talk about, so much adrenaline, so much just like, just like happiness to be able to do what we did. There were so many people yesterday who we helped and they would like, from the bottom of the hearts you could tell they were so thankful that we were just there for them. We use a multitude of organizations, nonprofits, and medical schools from this country. Um, specifically, we use Power of the Nickel, as well as Care International. A multitude of medical schools have participated. I had the honor in March of 2023 of leading the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine for the third year uh, to this location. We began a program of uh, matching funds for these trips if the students we're able to raise money, uh, we match their funds, and this year uh, we matched $10,000 with them. The money that we match, which is very important to the whole program, pays for all of the extra things, like our transportation in-country, our security, our medicines, those kinds of things that the students don't pay for. I want to thank, first of all, Do Care, Do Care International, Power of a Nickel, all these like organizations have been here to help us get to where we are right now. So that's been a huge help. Everyone at WVSOM who has been supportive of our club, like the staff, the students. The WVSOM Foundation was huge in terms of making sure we had enough funding to be able to come here. And whoever else has like sponsored and donated towards our organization. Dr. Flanders, thank you very much for the opportunity. The um, university that put together all of this, uh, the students and the amazing colleagues, uh, doctors that they donated their time and their money to come here uh, to my country and do this service. Thank you very much for that. I definitely want to, to thank Dr. Nimitz um, and Dr. Boyd uh, back at the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine for supporting us. Uh, really, you know, I, I can't give enough credit to WSOM for the way they've taught us. I would love to thank Power of a Nickel, the Grogs, Dr. Deering, Dr. Flanders. Um, it's been a wonderful experience and it's a great organization. Very much like to thank Dr. Neff. I want to thank all of the locals who just welcomed us into their church, community, and their lives, really. 
Um, I would also like to thank Do Care International and the Power of Nipple, which is our nonprofit organization, in making all of this happen. Um, especially Mr. Corbin has been working closely with us as well. You're always welcome to come back. Yeah, you're always welcome. And thanks. Thanks for that. Keep up the good work. Thank you.